<laughs> and, and just to show off, you quote it at every party. <laughs> Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri, going on, you know? You even studied up on the Clydesdale horses just so that you could have, talk about the king of beers. <laughs> So why would we not want to study the Word? The life-giving bread. This is the bread of life. Hallelujah. This Word is what nourishes us. But we need to be equipped. We need to be equipped. Why? Because you're going to have to pass your faith on to somebody else. We're going to affect lives. Whether you want to or not, whether you realize it or not, whether you become a pastor, a leader, evangelist, whether you become anything in the church at all, you will still, as a Christian, affect somebody's life. Amen. You're going to affect lives, whether for good or for bad, but you're going to affect somebody's life. So we need to be equipped so that we, we affect them for the good. We affect them for the long lasting. Amen. Amen. We affect them. I remember a pastor and he's here today. He told me one day, he said, John, you know what? When it all boils <laughs> down, you better take care of your wife and take care of your kids. Take care of your wife and your kids. Because if everybody else leaves, you want to make sure when you come home that your wife and kids will be there. Because you can win the whole world. You can win the neighborhood. You can win the gangster. You can win the hookers. You can win them all. But if they decide to leave and you haven't taken care of your wife and kids, then you're going to come home to an empty house. And you know what? That stays inside of me. Amen. So I take care of my wife and I take care of my kids. Amen. Do they get disciplined? Oh, yeah. Pastor Manuel said it well the other day. Discipline that Oh, I do. Hallelujah. I'll take your word, brother. Because <laughs> we're producing. How many know your kids are going to become what you are, not who you say you are? They're going to become exactly who you are, not who you present yourself to be. So you can present yourself and pro profess yourself as a prayer warrior. You can profess yourself as a holy roller. You can profess yourself as godly. But if you're not living it, then your kids is going to show inside of them. If they don't know how to pray, it's because they're not seeing you pray. If they don't even know where their Bible's at, it's because you probably don't carry yours. I, I want to talk to a real church. Because in this vision, we need to be real people. We need to be real soldiers for Christ. Amen. We need to be real sons and daughters of the Most High. Amen. We have this word and it's so accessible. We have it here. We have it in different translations. We have it so that we can understand it in plain English. We have it in Greek. We have it in Hebrew. We have it all kinds of shapes and forms. And yet, Michel keeps my Bibles. <laughs> And they can stay on me shelf if I don't go over there and take me Bible and read it. <laughs> we have to be equipped so that we can pass our faith on to others. So that we can affect them for the Lord and infect them for Jesus. See, without a proper foundation or without a clear vision, if you don't have a clear vision or if you're not equipping yourself spiritually so that you know what you believe. How many of you know you need to know what you believe before you can tell somebody else? You need to know what you believe. I need to know what the Bible says about me. I need to know how much God loves me. I need to know this and I need to be selfish about it. God, I need to know how much you care for me. Amen. Why? Because if I don't believe what his word says in me, then how am I going to convince you? How can we convince anybody else? This world is dying. This world is being uh, 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 convinced of every other religion out there. And the one true life, amen, is kind of getting laid aside. You know that just down the street is one of the biggest mosques in Southern California. The Muslims are running 5,000 strong inside that mosque in Garden Grove. 5,000 strong. And you know that they're training their five-year-olds how to witness 
They're training them so that they can go to kindergarten and teach your kids about Allah. Come on. They're going there with the message to train our kids in our in the schools. We send them to school. Bye, son. Bye, daughter. Thank the Lord I get a break from them for a while. And yet they're going into school, and these Muslim kids are going in there witnessing to them. Trying to rob the faith. And you and I have faith in the most high God. The Alpha, the Omega, the King of the World. You need to inspire our kids. Every day I take my son to school at 11 o'clock. I take him. And he, as soon as I pull out of the driveway and I throw a left on, on the one street, he says, Dad? I go, what's up, son? He said, you better not forget to pray for me. I say, yeah, <coughs> I won't forget to pray for you, dude. And he said, all right, okay. And I'll pray for him. Then, then, then this is on a, on a Monday. I prayed for him in the car on the way to, on the way to school. Wow. Then we got to school and I turned off the car and he said, Dad, I think you need to pray for me again. <laughs> and I, I, for a second I thought, what did I do? I didn't pray good enough the first time. What's <laughs> up with this dude, you know? <laughs> And I said, why, son? Why do I need to pray for you again? He said, Dad, I forgot to tell you. My, my son's four. He said, I had a bad dream last night. And, and I woke up scared, so I want you to pray for me again. So I grabbed him, picked him up, I, I hugged him, and I was, as we were walking towards the school, and I prayed for him Amen. that God would re remove that thing from his mind. Amen. Amen. I, I prayed for him. But you see, he understands that four that God has the power to take away what's going on. Yeah. He has to know how to pour to know that Jesus has the power to fix them if something's hurt. And you see, Paul was, was spreading this message to his son, saying, son, there's going to be some stuff that's going to go on. And you're going to need to be strong. You're going to need to be equipped. You're going to need to have the know-how in order to keep the vision alive. Amen. And here and now in 2010, we need to grab this vision and run with it with all of our heart. Because you know what? Time is running out. Somebody said the other day, come on now, we had a tornado in Orange County. We had a tornado. We had floods all over Orange County and L.A. County. We had storms and winds blowing and an earthquake on the same day. A tornado where tornadoes don't belong. Storms and floods and an earthquake all on the same day. If we don't recognize the sign of the time, the Lord is coming back soon. Amen. And, and, and the way that the Bible says that the devil is seeking whom he may devour, you and I need to seek whom we can lead to God. So that we See, but one thing I want you to understand as we go. Turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number 4 here. Our work is not done. See, sometimes we, we, we look and say, well, I, I just need to win them to the Lord. I just need to win them to the Lord. If I just win them to the Lord... Then I'm good. How many of you know that's not the end? That's not the end of where we're going. That, that's the beginning of what we're doing. If you get somebody and you minister to them and you share the love of God with them and you share the word of God with them and, and you get that great privilege of leading them to the Lord, now there's a responsibility on you. Now that you led them to the Lord, now you've got to teach them something. See, it, uh, many times we, we just want to pass it off to the pastor and, and let him do the job. But you know what? The Bible says that you need to make disciples of every nation, Amen. baptizing them in the name of the Father. Now, yes, I know my job. I know I need to do the same. Amen. But you see, as a disciple of the Lord, you need to be a discipler at the same time. It's not, it's not done just because somebody gets born again. Now, the discipler has to become a discipler. Amen. 
and so on and so forth. If, if I lead you to the Lord, now there's a mandate from God, a responsibility from the Lord that tells me I need to train you up. I need to show you in the word, show you in prayer, show you in love, show you my example, amen, so that you can take it all in. And then you, in turn, will turn around and go get another sinner and 